Hi everyone, today we are going to study token bucket algorithm. This is yet another congestion control algorithm just like the leaky bucket algorithm. The leaky bucket algorithm has a rigid output design at an average rate independent of the bursty traffic. That means no matter how bursty the traffic it, the uh, traffic is the output de design of the leaky bucket algorithm is such that the uh, output or the outflow of the data will be at a constant rate whatever the rate of inflow is that means the outflow of data will always be constant irrespective of the inflow rate of the data so basically this means that the leaky bucket algorithm does not consider bursty traffic now in real applications or in practicality this is not always applicable because in some applications when large bursts of data arrive output has to be allowed to speed up we cannot consider the output rate to be constant at all the times because when you have bursty data you need to speed up the outflow of the data so this calls for a more flexible algorithm uh, because the leaky bucket algorithm is very rigid. So we need a flexible algorithm that considers bursts of data or bursty data and hence adjusts the outflow according to that. So a more flexible algorithm, preferably the one that never loses information. Because as we've already seen that in the leaky bucket algorithm, whenever there is some bursty data, since the outflow is at a constant rate, so the extra or the burst of data that comes in is spilled out of the bucket or in other words, the data packets are dropped. So we do not want any information to be lost by dropping the data. So hence a new algorithm a more flexible one that is the token bucket algorithm finds its use in rate limiting that means limiting the rate of data inflow and outflow now it is a congestion control algorithm that indicates when traffic should be sent so basically it is shaping the traffic it is controlling the congestion of the traffic so how is it doing that it is doing that by indicating or telling when traffic should be sent so the bucket that is the subnet that we assume of as a bucket contains tokens and each of the tokens defines a packet of predetermined size so the token bucket uh, in the token bucket we can assume the bucket to be the subnet and the tokens to be the packets and each of the token is defining a packet of a predetermined size that means the size of the packets is predetermined now the tokens in the buckets are deleted for the ability to share a packet. So whenever you don't want to share a packet, the token in the buckets are deleted. So when tokens are shown, a flow to transmit traffic appears in the display of tokens. So whenever there are tokens, that means there is a flow of transmission of the traffic, right? So no token, that means when there are no tokens in the bucket, no flow sends its packets so no token means no transmission of packets hence a flow transfers traffic up to its peak burst rate in good tokens in the bucket so whenever there is a flow that means it is transferring the data packets or it is transferring the traffic uh, traffic up to its peak burst that means you can easily handle the bursty traffic now what is the need for token bucket algorithm by now you must have already uh, obviously understood the need for a token bucket algorithm so the leaky bucket algorithm enforces output pattern at an average rate that we have seen there is an average and constant rate no matter how bursty the traffic is so it is a quite rigid algorithm which is not practical in all the cases so when there are large bursts of data to deal with bursty traffic in such cases we need a flexible algorithm which is the token bucket algorithm so that no data is lost now what are the steps of token bucket algorithm in regular intervals tokens are thrown in buckets so tokens means packets the tokens are representing your data packets so not cons continuously but in regular intervals in regular intervals the tokens are thrown in the bucket f so F is here representing the maximum capacity of the bucket. Say the maximum capacity of the bucket is F. 
so if there is a ready packet that means a packet that is ready to be transmitted a token is removed from the bucket whenever there is a ready packet the token is removed from the bucket and packet is sent if there is no token in the bucket packet cannot be sent no token means no packet can be sent now through this diagram through this diagrammatic example we can better understand the token bucket algorithm so this is a host computer first of all we will see figure a so this is host computer these are the data packets that you can see so one token is added to the bucket at every t time delta t time interval that means not continuously but within regular time intervals the tokens are added to the bucket to control the flow of data basically so one token is added to the bucket every delta t seconds so this is the bucket and the uh, one token is being added to the bucket in every delta t seconds and these are the data packets which are being transmitted from the host computer now this is the network right okay now again the second scenario again shows a host computer now this is the scene when three data packets have uh, when uh, out of four data packets or five data packets here in this case out of five data packets three data packets have already been transmitted now you can see earlier there were five data packets now only two data packets are left and three have already been transmitted so two packets left and three out of five transmitted so this is the network after so this is the network before the all the data packets were transmitted and this is the network when three out of five data packets have been transmitted and two have yet to be transmitted so as you can see in figure a we can see a bucket holding three tokens here we can see that this bucket is holding three tokens this bucket is holding three tokens and five packets waiting to be transmitted so the bucket is having three tokens there are five one two three four five packets that have to be transmitted so three tokens basically means that at any given point of time no more than three packets can be transmitted because there are only three tokens number of tokens is equals to the number of packets that can be transmitted at any given point of time so if there are three tokens and five packets waiting to be transmitted so for a packet to be transmitted we know that it must first of all capture and then destroy one token so one packet has to be transmitted it will capture that one token and destroy it second packet has to be transmitted it will capture that second token and destroy it and so on so now in a uh, figure b you can see this is the figure c that you can see so in figure b you can see that three of five packets have gotten through so there were three tokens so hence three to uh, packets out of those five pockets got through the bucket this you can see in the later figure figure b the three packets have got through out of the five packets and two are left now so but the other two are stuck waiting for more tokens to be generated why those two packets got stuck because there were no extra tokens they were only through uh, to three tokens and so three packets got through the bucket but two are left because there are no extra tokens and those two packets are then waiting for more tokens to be generated now ways in which token bucket is superior to leaky bucket so this is how we uh, we will see what are the ways in which the token bucket is superior to the leaky bucket algorithm now first of all the leaky bucket algorithm controls the rate at which packets are introduced into the network but it is very conservative in nature it is controlling the rate at which uh, the data packets are introduced in the network and there is a, always a constant outflow of data data and whatever extra packets are there they will be dropped right so it is in a way controlling the rate at which packets would be enter, entering into the network but it is very conservative conservative in the sense that it is a very rigid algorithm since we assume a, a whole of a fixed size so that means the outflow of data will always always be constant no matter how bursty the data inflow of data is but some flexibility is introduced in the token bucket algorithm as we saw which is always required because it is not practical to always have a constant outflow of data especially when you have bursty traffic 
so in token bucket algorithm tokens are generated at each tick up to a certain limit obviously there will be a limit up to which you can generate take tokens you cannot endlessly and mindlessly generate tokens so there is a limit up to which tokens are generated at each tick and the presence of a token means that is whenever a packet has to be transmitted it have it will first of all capture the token and then destroy it so capturing a token means a packet can be transmitted number of tokens equals to the number of packets that can be transmitted and if there are any extra packets then they will wait for more tokens to be generated so that they can capture the tokens and be transmitted so for an incoming packet to be transmitted as i said it must capture a token and the transmission takes place at the same rate hence some of the bursty packets are transmitted at the same rate if tokens are available and thus introduces some amount of flexibility in the system so if uh, i say if i suppose that there is a burst in traffic of all of a sudden 10 packets and if at all i have 10 uh, 10 tokens in the bucket then i can transmit the data at the same rate at at which it is at which it is coming and i do not enforce the concept that the outflow of data will be constant no matter what so if there are 10 tokens available and there is a sudden burst of 10 packets or there is a sudden inflow of 10 packets then i can immediately transfer all those 10 packets at the same time that means the rigidity that the outflow of data will be constant no matter what is removed here provided i have desired number of tokens so this is the concept of your token bucket algorithm